Roman Caravan Show, that's not live, it's the video. It's the new one. It's the new extra special one. Yeah, we're going to be doing one every month, aren't we? We are, yes. So what we're going to be doing? Okay, so today we've got a motorhome review. We're starting with a Marble Veta KY85. Mm. Bit of Italian design. That's the A class, isn't it? It is the A class. Oh, I look forward to that one. And Mark's going to be reviewing a six berth uh, caravan. He is, he is, yes. Mm. That's have, right. Have we got Lee today? We have got Lee, he's doing a bit of... Uh, advice on how to set your motor caravan up for the season. Or and motor motor around, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I believe Mark's got a challenge for us. I believe he has. Although, he I no. No, I don't either. I don't think he's going to be very good at it. No, I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be very good at it either. No, no, no. So we'll see. Okay. Oh, look. Mark's bought the tea caravan. So he has. God, how old is that? It looks like you. Jeez, let's go have a look. You right, Lee? Hey, you all right? My goodness. Let's have a look inside, Shane. God, this is old. Jeepers. Oh. Yeah, Lee, I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm blocking at the minute, so I'll get that done and out of the way and then I'll see what's what. The trouble with Mark is such a cheapskate, isn't he? You always have to get oh, no, a is. decent right. caravan. Just, just give me two minutes, I'm just going for a peek. You can have a wee? Yeah. Uh, What's that? What the? What? Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable! You what? Back in the compound? Not down at... Oh, bloody hell. Okay, okay. I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Hey! The T-Man! Hey! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? What's he doing in there? Show, isn't it? What did who where I've been up there and back I know you've been there and back. We're in it. Anyway, let's go have a look at the caravan. Today we're looking at the 2017 Sterling Eccles 590.
Now the 2017, you could order this with or without the Aldi Central Heating and this one was upgraded and they paid and had the Aldi Central Heated fitting. Standard fittings on this Sterling Eccles, we've got an external 230 volt socket, we've got external locker underneath the bed, we've got the barbecue point, Round the front then we've got the Alco ATC and then round on the other side we've actually got storage going underneath the bunk bed also. They also come fitted with the solar panel, it's fitted on 13 pin electrics and let's have a look inside and see what it's like. This has also had the motor mover fitted and again that will stay on the van. Now when you walk inside of the Sterling Eccles 590 we've got the long kitchen area and right at the end here we've got a little fold up unit that just extends this kitchen area. We've got the three burner gas rings and we have got the electric ring and then we've got our grill and our oven. We've got the microwave and then at the front instead of having the chest of drawers we've actually got the wrap round seating so this gives absolutely plenty of room for the family of six to all actually be able to get round in this front area and enjoy the space together. All of our windows and blinds, we've got the fly screens and the blinds fitted and that's on all of the windows and again, same with our roof blinds um, all the way through. Plenty of lighting, we've got the LED lighting fitted into this as standard. So again, all of our lighting is low wattage. We've got, at the front, we've got a cigarette type 12 volt lighter we've got 230 volt we've got our aerial points and also more 230 volt sockets there this is also fitted with the radio and then moving towards the rear we've got our washroom that's actually got a separate shower and toilet And again, that is quite a good size, so there's maybe just enough room to get changed in there. And then at the back of the caravan, we've got our dinette with our two fixed bunk beds. Again, we've got storage all underneath of this side here. And we have also got the locker that gives us access from outside. So again, plenty of storage. Both of these seats here, we've got plenty of storage underneath. We've got a little table area here, which again, we can put our above lights on and then just in this little cupboard we've got a 230 volt socket we've got a 12 volt point and we've got a tv aerial point and then just on the top of the unit we've got the little removable panel which if we want the tv we can run all the wiring nice and neatly and straight into that cupboard there Again, at the back here, this makes into a single bed and then we've also got the bunk bed that comes up on the side so we can actually sleep four children at the rear and then the two adults at the front. And again, that front bed, with not having the front chest of drawers, makes an absolute huge double bed. I'll pop that up actually and just show you how big that is. And again, to make our front to make our front bed up, it's just literally slide out, our back cushions go in, and then, as I say, that is a huge double bed then, and again, it just really makes a big difference not having that front chest of drawers in there to the size of that bed. It's all been looked after really well. Um, the upholstery is in absolutely perfect condition, uh, even all the child's area at the back. We've got plenty of storage all the way through. We've got underbed storage at the front and again we've got a large wardrobe at the side which uh, holds a big freestanding table and we've also got an aerial in there too. Now we've got the newer Swift control panel where we can actually dim some of the lighting throughout the caravan. As mentioned before we've got the Aldi central heating fitted in this one which works on the gas and electric. So that gives us radiator system all the way around the outside of the caravan. And then in the bathroom, we've actually got a nice little radiator just fitted on the side there too. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed the little review and tour around the Sterling Eccles 590. So this is a 2017, it's got the motor mover, it's got the solar panel, it was upgraded so it's got the Aldi Central heating on there. We have got the bike rack fittings on the rear as well, so if you wanted to put a bike rack it's all set up ready for that to be added. And in just general, again, it's been really well looked after. So uh, thanks, I'm Mark at the Caravan Place. Mark, that was shocking driving of a caravan. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. No, mate, I didn't know you were in the back, did I? I've just, like, done it perfect, if you know. It's a straight road. It's an old bloody landing strip, yeah, almost. When you reverse, you have to keep going from side to side, like that, to make sure you get in your move. That's not what snaking is with a caravan. That's when you're driving, it starts to snake yeah, at high okay. speeds. Look, I'll you need you, you, you need to go have lessons, you I'll do. I'll settle this, right? I'll settle for a little course. We'll see how good you are now. We're going to reverse the car and the caravan round here and into the box. If you hit a cone, it's a five second penalty. Timed, we'll time it, all of us, all of us. All of us. All of us. Well, someone's got to do the timer. We, we've got time, time. This is an unfair advantage here, Shane. It is. He deals You're a with professional. Caverns. You're meant to be a professional. You used to use one at least. <laughs> I don't know what you're professional at, but you're professional at yeah. something. You're just. I've never done one. I hope we got insurance. The only good thing is after seeing him reversing that a minute ago, I feel pretty confident there. So who's going first? I'll go first. I'll okay. show you how it's done. Okay. Go on then. Let's do it. Off you pop. Watch your learn, boys. Watch your learn. <laughs> boys. Not that narrow. <laughs> Yeah, be ready. Touch the curb. Doesn't look <laughs> hard, does it, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong bay. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. How oh, oh. oh, has he missed that? He's done it. <laughs> <laughs> <Come in. laughs> no, you're not even close. Hey, <laughs> we, oh, you've hit the curve. Oh, oh. It hasn't followed, but in fairness, not yet. <laughs> He's doing it ass. again. <laughs> Done. You're not in yet. Uh, not in. No, you take your itch, ain't in. Go back another three foot. I'll press start again. <laughs> Engine started. Two foot. We'll give him that. Five second penalty for the cone. Check the other side. I've cheated. 51 seconds plus 51. a five second penalty, so that's No, 56. 10, you hit it twice. Sorry, 61 seconds. I'm just fixed up here, isn't I? Right. Shane, show them how it's done. Go! Wow. 
Where's he gone? <laughs> Keep going, Shane, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. That's a great effort. Well done. You've done that before. What's this time? You wouldn't think I got the great class effort. one license, would you? No penalties. No penalties. 40.42. That's impressive. That's impressive. That's impressive. I don't think we'll do it. Come no, on, I don't mate. Either. Remember it's automatic. Are you going to automatic? Going handbrake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go again. <laughs> Ready? Go. <laughs> right? No, this this is where everybody goes wrong. They turn too early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Has he got him back? Oh, he's done it! He's done it. Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Okay! Oh, not Good in yet! It. You got about another two foot! Hey, you can't be back <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's a great effort! That's a great effort! Go on, how long? Any penalties? No, no penalties! 54.04. Now you've got to see that's really good reversing there by the three of them. So we'll move on. Oh, 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 oh. I'll get the clock out. Get the clock on. <laughs> <laughs> <Your turn. laughs> now he's not done this before. There's a 10 second penalty pulling out. I don't I can't believe every time I thought he's going to win. I think because he's never done it before, we shouldn't make it quite so tight. Take the other one over there somewhere. We'll give him a chance. Oh, that'll be alright. I don't. Yeah. He's going. <laughs> Look for the cone. <laughs> oh, we moved them too much. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to take the other one. I'll do. I'll do yeah. Please say that was over a minute. Thank God for that. Bad. That wasn't bad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice, I kept it straight all the way up there and didn't oh, turn no. into the bay. You've done so well. And then when you decided to pull forward, you knocked that one over. <laughs> you know, had a winning time, to be fair. So, who has won it? Who's in last place? Um, what was the other time? <laughs> 
<laughs> you, well, let's put it this way. You did five second penalty. One minute so 25. One, one minute 25. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And then I think it was Mark. What did he get? He was about a minute odd, wasn't he? 61. He got a 10-second penalty. Yeah. Then it was yourself. 55 seconds, wasn't it? And then it. And then it was Shane. 40 odd. So for this week, Motorhome was one. Caravanners zero. And we get the tech. We get to choose the next challenge. Stitch up. Mark, can I just ask what went wrong? Professional Stitch caravan tower. I've just seen you moving the cones. Yeah, then I forgot to move them back when I moved them. <laughs> so, we'll move on, eh? Yep. See what we've got next. So, with more and more people now um, starting to use the motorhomes for van life, for living, the ideal motorhome to have is the A-Class. Yeah, and Mobile Veta is one brand that does something like this. So we've got, so we've got Roll, Roller Team that's sort of this sort of price range and Italian as well. But we've got the Mobile Veta K Yacht, which comes in three layouts overall. So in 1961, Mobile Veta started to make furniture, Mobile Veta design. And then in 1971, they first started making motorhomes. Yep. And then in 1996, in this country, they started importing them, starting with what was known as the Yori Yacht at the time. Another A-Class, but it was built on the Iveco with a twin rear wheel. And it was quite a sturdy uh, built thing altogether. Again, another A-Class, but it was just put together really nicely and nice and sleek, just like this K-Yacht here. So the one we're going to have a look at is the K-Yacht 85. And I think we did, they did a few more, didn't they, Shane? Yeah, there's, there's only three total. There's only three models they do. They do the, the 79, which is an island bed, and then they also do an 80. And that's a really nice little layout. This is just under seven and a half metres, but the 80 is just under seven metres, but it's got a lounge and an electric drop down bed at the rear. What's the price for you? If you buy one in 21, you're probably talking a shade or five pound under 80,000 pounds, plus your extras, automatic gearbox and so on. It's a good looking van. It's a lovely looking van. You can, the Mobile Vetta design is a lovely Italian style. Hmm. So we'll start down with this side. So first thing we come to is the gas locker. Good size uh, compartment for two good size gas bottles. And then when we're further down the side of the van, we have the habitation door, which we'll go inside in a moment. And then we have the vents for our fridge. Now, look at the distance there. We know inside we're gonna get a good size fridge freezer. Next, we move on to the cassette toilet. And then we have aerial and uh, PowerPoint and then we have outside gas. And then moving to the back, I'm guessing this is gonna be the garage where we're gonna have the beds above. The machine never tells me what type of van we're gonna do. And then we open up, and that's a good sized garage in there. And then we have this beautiful back end, the lovely graphite style bits. And then we're into the garage where we've got a monster hiding under the bed. And that's a good sized garage. It's great that you can access it from both ends. Yeah. And then on this side, you've got the Truma heat and exhaust. You've got the 16 inch alloy wheels, which you also saw on the other side, obviously. Electric hook up, or hook up, as Jason would say. External shower, water inlet, and finishing off with what is the fuel filler cap. What have we got down here, Shane? Oh, yes, down here as well, we've got a wet locker. Hmm. And the good thing is, it does stay up. Yeah. Isn't that door on the wrong side? They're both on the wrong side, actually. In 2018, this is a 17 model. Yep. 2018, apart from the doors, really, they haven't changed too much, but they made it a UK spec. So the habitation door is on this side and the driver's doors is on, on the, the driver's, driver's side. side. Yeah. Right. Shall we have a look inside? We shall. Okay, so now we're in the cab. Now this is Quite a high spec of standard. It's on the 2.3 JTD engine, but it's got 150 brake horsepower as standard. This does have the optional extra of the automatic gearbox. Uh, we've got the leather steering wheel, Bluetooth steering wheel controls, sat nav, climate control, cruise control, air conditioning, and as my lovely assistant will show you right here. It does have a reversing camera. <laughs> the reversing camera. We've also got cab blinds all the way around. So, we're at the rear of the van. We had a look at the big garage uh, that we showed you outside. 
So on top of that big garage then, we've got the two big single beds. We've got good storage all the way around with the lockers. And then we do have the nice blue mood lighting um, LED light. Now, they are singles, but you can also make them into a double. Uh, we we'll put the hatch down, this slides out, and then we do have the cushions as well. Another good feature is we do have a really good storage area underneath. So, we've had a look at the beds. Let's start moving towards the middle of the van. And what we have on this side is we have the, the toilet area. We've got the cassette toilet, and then we've got this storage here with an extractor fan. And then we have our wash bowl with tap. So opposite the toilet area, what we have got is our shower. So we open up like so, and what we've got, we've got a really good looking shower. I do like the lighting there and how the mobile letters um, all lit up. And it's a good size shower area. Let me just have a double check. Yeah, that's a good size shower. And it does hold 120 litres of fresh water, so a couple of good showers. The other thing I forgot to show you was we do have the storage this side as well. And they do make clever use of the storage as well on the steps. So a good design at the back. I do like the back. And now Shane's going to show you um, the kitchen area. So my favourite part is the kitchen, as you can probably tell. So we've got the three hob burner. We've got under this little frisbee here is a nice big deep old bin to be fair. It's probably 30, 40 centimetres down. Hot water, cold water as you'd imagine in the sink. Storage cupboards above. The low, which I really quite like. We've got these nice LEDs around. We've got some drawers just behind me. And then we've got this nice cupboard below. Um, just to give you a little bit more space, pull the handle up and it does fold all the way down and you get another big bin which goes all the way towards the back wall of the motorhome. Now, on the other side we've got things which are even more special. We all like a bit of spice in our life, so we've got a spice rack, obviously. Above is the oven grill, or is it grill oven? Oven grill? Grill oven? Sure. And then we've got a nice 150 litre big wide fridge. Jane, are they storage hatches down there? These are storage hatches. There's, there's different ones because obviously it's double floors. Yeah. So you've got water under and so on. So one thing I get with this van is it's well it's well designed because it's, there's a lot of storage with it. Yes. So the payload must be good then. Mm, depends. Depends what your license is. If you've got, if you're restricted to your three and a half ton license, it gives you about 342 kilograms. Right. Which, let's be conservative and say that the passenger is 80 kilograms. Yep. You're already down to 260 kilograms of payload, which doesn't give you much, does it at all? Not at all. So why so much storage? Well, you can upgrade it. You can upgrade it to 3650, which gives you another 150 kilograms. Then you're talking just below 500, and then you're starting to get towards a usable sort of uh, payload. Right. And speaking of storage, under one of these hatches, obviously we've got plenty. You've got, which is my favourite part, obviously it's very Italian. You've got your, your Italian wines and Prosecco and everything like that. Just like that, look. You've got, you've got space for six bottles. I mean, that's good, isn't it? And it should be quite cool as well under there because it is under the floor. Really nice touch there. Okay, so now towards the front, we have got this lovely half dinette lounge. So we have got lots of space. We've got the two traveling seats facing towards me, a little bit of an L shape and then a single bench seat. And then you've obviously got these uh, front seats that do swivel around. Now it's got the eco leather. I can't decide what color it is. What do you think, Jason? It's an off-whitey, grey, whitey, don't know type of colour. Thanks for that summary. So okay. yes, it's a grey, whitey, off grey, whitey something colour. But yeah, it's, it's a usable lounge. For, bearing in mind it's only four berths with four belted seats. You can fit four around here. 
You've got the driver and passenger seat, which you can fit around. You've got the single bench seat opposite, and then you've got a couple more over there without, um, well, if you like your legs, then you need somewhere to put your legs in. That's what you've got in this area. And Shane gets excited about a box where you can put a wine bottle. What I get excited about is underneath here are all your grubbings. You've got your, your battery charging, you've got your 12 volt fuses, and you've got your 230 trip fuses as well. So that's more important than a bottle of wine making sure your motor home still runs. And it's, it's good as well because you know, you've got the water tanks under the other ones. So when it is cold and it is very well insulated this, at least you can get to everything without having to go out. But there's one fault. What's that? You'll have warm wine. Well, not when it's cold. Well, you can't, you just said it's well insulated. <laughs> well, that's under the floor. It'd be fine. Fair enough. Ooh, what's that shade? Roxanne. It's a red light. Or Jason. So, red light, so if you want your, your red wine nice and warm, which people, some people do, on the floor heating. Perfect. And above the habitation, what you've got here is your control panel, which pretty much has everything on there. You've got your water pump, your lights, how much fresh water, waste water's in, your date, your time, and pretty much everything in a good spot and everything's contained there, nice and easy to use. And then next to that, we do have our Truma heating and blown air system as well. And then if we do get some heat and some flies, grab the fly screen. And you can keep the Jasons out. So Shane, an A-Class wouldn't be an A-Class without the drop-down bed at the front. It wouldn't, and that's the favourite feature about the A-Class, and that's what it gives you. It gives you that permanent bed above the cab. Undo your seatbelt, which is, which, which is one that we did earlier, and then we drop it down. Make sure your seats below are out of the way, just so it can go all the way down. And then we've got a ladder just to be able to fit in. Again, it's nice and bright, it's carpeted ceiling all the way through. It just looks a really cosy place and it's quite a big double bed at that. So there you have it. I forgot the name of the van. Mobile Vetta K Yacht Techno Line 85. So there you have it, Mobile Vetta K Yacht Techno Line 85, this one is. Why do motorhomes have, the European ones have so long names for them? Why I don't know. Why don't, I don't just call them Fred? <laughs> I mean, bearing in mind it is, they're all techno line, so they might as well just call it a Marvel Veta K Yacht Techno line because you've also got the keys or the keys, I don't know what the other one's called, but they're low profile. Anyway. So if you're looking at living full time in a motorhome, this is a good van. It's got plenty of storage space. It has, and the other good thing that I do like about this, it is a wood free construction called the iTech, quite handily. No wood. Woodless. <laughs> so we're going to look at how to check how much gas you've got left in your bottle basically. So we've got a couple of products that we can have a look at. Here's something we brought earlier. So what we've got here, my little mate, we've got three different bits of equi equipment we're going to check. We've got two little level pens. Uh, these check the level of the liquid within the bottle. Obviously LPG, liquid petroleum gas. So that's the, li the liquid itself within the bottle, and that will check whereabouts that liquid level comes to. These ones here are a bit more technical. That's basically a set of Bluetooth scales. Um, you need to set up an app on your phone, um, calibrate a bottle to it, and, and other bits and bobs. There is quite a bit of setup involved in this. Um, Can you use different size bottles on that? You can use different size bottles, yeah, because you'll ju you can just recalibrate it, um, varying on, on whatever size what of bottle, bottle you want. The problem is that you you know you're going to have to set up with a full bottle, um, and then as the level comes down to the liquid, you'll read and and then it'll um, give you a readout on the app of, of what sort of percentage of gas you've got left in. Now opening this one up and taking it out, that's the actual unit. You've got a on off switch there, you switch it on and then connect it up to your phone via the Bluetooth, via the app. Uh, you've got the battery compartment there, which is a little screw underneath that holds that in place. That's the unit, fits in there quite nicely, doesn't fit in everything though. 
Right. And we tried it in another motorhome before and it was too big to actually fit in the base. Oh, right. Um, so it's not going to be ideal for everything. Um, if you've got quite a small gas compartment, then th this will be no good for you. There's an important thing there if you're going to be buying that, is you really need to check the gas compartment. Make sure the size. No, you bought it. <laughs> it's quite expensive. We that, that's, a, that's a really important point there, though. Before you buy that, it's probably about under pounds worth there. Is you probably really need to check your gas locker before you, you drop that type of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if that had been my motor over there, the got me four and this would have turned up and tried to put it in, I'd be gutted because it, it just wouldn't go anywhere near. Um, now, for the purpose of demonstration, I'll, I'll just do it on the floor rather than on the, on the locker, but you've basically got a set up, uh, an app on your phone, which we have here. Here's one we prepared earlier. Is that the right app? That's the app there. Um, so you, you weigh the bottle, you, you get an overall weight of what a full bottle is. Uh, you have to create an account, etc., etc. And then when you want to use it, you literally will have your bottle on. I mean, the ideal thing to do when you set it up is when you switch your gas on, you'll switch it on from there. The good thing with this is you can do it all from the luxury of inside the van. Um, and then when you want to recheck it, you just click on the update. It'll tell you your last connection time, Bluetooth connected, connected, and then it'll give you a percentage reading. Um, that's not accurate on there. This is purely because we, we just quickly set it up with a bottle. Um, but yeah, it's... I suppose that's not ideal if you're away on site, you buy a new gas bottle, you're not really gonna take a set of scales with you to weigh the full bottle. And... No, no. So, yeah, um, once, once you've weighed one bottle, if you constantly use six kgs, once you've weighed one bottle, there will be a little bit of variance in the weight of a full bottle. So it's not going to be 100% accurate because you've got that bit of weight variance every time. So, so yes. Yeah. scales, aren't they? They are bit, literally posh, posh scales. scales. Bluetooth scales, basically. Yeah. So, but the good thing with that, once you've got it set up, it will give you your, your gas consumption and, and things like that. So you can actually tell how much gas you've used over the last hour. Um, so yeah, that's quite a nifty little bit. Um, would that see more of a full timer? Probably. Probably more around, for so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. can see how, what they're using, where, what they're using it on. Yeah. It would be more beneficial for something like that. For your average Joe like us, I think these would be the way to go. You've got the Truma, you've got the Dometic. They're both a level pen. The Truma is the cheaper one of the other one, is it? No, it's the other way around. So the Truma is more expensive. The Dometic is slightly cheaper. What's, what's the Truma? Um, the Trumas at the mid, they, they used to be about 56, 57 pounds. They're up to about 75 pounds at the minute. So um, about 50. Um, so a little bit of difference in price there. Now the idea with these, both the same, you'll press it against the bottle and you'll get a reading. Uh, red means there's no liquid, green means that there is. Uh, that one's got to be held on at a 90 degree angle. If, you, if you're holding it and, and you're wonky with it, it will give you a false reading. Um, so literally for that one, you just press it against the side of the bottle and th this bottle is really low. So I think that must be Jason's, hasn't it? Yeah, this is Jason's yeah. bottle. It's too tight to buy yeah. a new one. Um, so you can see there that that's, that's borderline of where the level of the liquid is. Um, do the same again with this one. And there you go, see around the same sort of level. We get in. Same sort of readings. We were. There's, something wrong, with, there's something wrong with it's that now. Up. This is this suddenly filled up. Why is that not working like it is? Yeah. <coughs> Where did we go from? Um, so this one here, same sort of thing. Press it against the bottle. There you go, red. So if you come down a bit, there you go. You can see we're green. So it's around about the same sort of area. They are quite close. We've checked them before on other bottles. They do read very close to, to each other. So they are, you know, right. picking up little liquid. You can play with both of these two. Um, what, which one's the best? And why is that one more expensive, do you think? Um, probably because it's got a torch. Truma have put a torch on theirs. 
um, it's it's a bit of a bigger unit. Personally, um, that one's easier to use because it's easier to hold yeah. against the bottle. That one's quite easy to hold off at, at the wrong angle and give you a false reading. We couldn't decide which was the best, to be fair. And I think I chose the Chirk Truma and you like the Dometic one. I, I like the Dometic one purely because you can quite easily pop it in your pocket. And... I think for the caravan or motor over, probably the Dometic one's a better one. I think, I think you're, yeah, you're not use it, it's, it's like easier, it. it's smaller. Yeah. Uh, I like that Truma because you've got the torch like on it. Well. And it's it yeah. just seems a little bit more robust, but both do pretty much the same yeah. job. Yeah. So, yeah. And they are pretty much reading the, the the same. identical, so yeah. so yeah. I think for your average motor or camera, I think the domestic one's the best one. Well, people in the trade, that were using them more or less all the time, I'd go for more of the true one. Mm. I, I think that like one would be a bit more robust, to be fair. That right. one with a plastic shell, I think if you drop that a couple of times, there's more chance of that one breaking than that one. But it is a bit of a 50-50 split yeah, on both yeah. of them. But fair, either, so. either one, they do what, yeah. they, the, what they're what they designed to do, what they say they're going to do. Um, and and then that's your, posh, the, your posh scales are and your really posh scales. people who are in the vans all the time yeah. to get to know the levels. And yeah. everything else. I like the, the app on that because you can be inside and you've not got to come outside in the rain. And, and, and you can always just keep an eye on with the app, but there's a hell of a lot of setting up in that. Oh, yeah, yeah. A hell of a lot of setting up. And well, once it's done, it's done. Once it's done, it's done. Providing it'll fit in your gas locker. And That's you always, the biggest, yeah. Biggest drawback. And as long as you always stick to the same size gas bottles, it's going to give you a fairly good reading, isn't it? You're not going to be a million miles away no. uh, if you're using the same bottles all the time. So. so, thanks for watching this week's show. Please tune in for the next one. We're going to release content every Sunday night at 7.30. You've obviously got the live which happened next week, that's going to be the end of each month. You've got this show which is going to be the start of the month and then we're going to release regular podcasts and so on. Join us for next time.